so good to be here, Apostle David. You know, I didn't, I didn't even think about July the 7th or July the, the, the 8th, but I believe it is prophetic. Amen. You know, I was trying to think of something good to say about Apostle David a few minutes ago, but I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> but then it occurred to me that when I met Apostle David 17 or 18 years ago, I don't remember exactly now how long it was, um, I saw a tremendous gift inside of him. And I thought, you know, if, 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 this, if this man can hear God the way he hears God, then God can use him. God can use this man. And so I, I convinced him to come down to Nicaragua, and uh, then he found out that Nicaragua was right next to the gates of hell. <laughs> Amen? And he was hot, and he was sweating. I mean, he, I don't think he, he'd ever preached in that type of temperature before. And then we were on our way to another city, and uh, one, of the little, one of the young guys in the car, he leaned over, he said, Apostle David, you know the city we're going, it's the hottest city in the country. <laughs> and he's, he looked at me like, like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Amen. But Apostle David is a tremendous man. He has a, he has a gift. And I spoke to you last night about the gift. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. They're irrevocable. Amen. And the gift of God in you does things um, in your life that you can't do yourself. That's why God gives you, to establish you in what he's called you to do. And everybody's gifted. Everybody matters. Everybody's important. Every joint provides. Amen. And so, see, the dynamics of what's happening here in this territory um, um, has a lot to do with the various gifts that are inside of us, inside the people that are here. Amen? Amen. We are remnant people. We're not like everybody else. That's why people don't know what to do with us. You know, you know it, takes a, it takes a stubborn man like Apostle David to put up with you. You know, you're not as nice as you think you are. Amen? And it takes a man like Apostle David to deal with stubborn and stiff-necked people. Amen. Look at somebody telling me he's talking about somebody else. <laughs> but I'm conforming. Amen. We're moving along. So it's good to be here. And I'm, I'm looking at all the, the work that you guys did and the transition that's taking place and all of the, I, could just, I saw the pictures on the internet yesterday morning. And uh, I just want to give you guys a hand clap. Come on, let's give everybody a hand clap. You know, that's how you spell ministry, right? W-O-R-K. Amen. And W-R-O-K leads to S-W-E-A-T. That's called sweat. Amen. And that's called ministry. And so we like, as apostles, we love to see people work. Work, 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 work. Amen. That means we're getting something done. We're producing. Amen. And that's part of the ministry. And that's what, that's awesome to see the men come together here like we did last night. And I believe in men. I believe, men, you are called to be champions of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. To be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so I commend you, men, for coming here and being a part of what God's doing here in this territory. You ain't seen nothing yet. I said, you haven't seen nothing yet. We are called to invade, occupy, influence, and we're taking over in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're not part of the Pachamba Boy Parade we're part of the kingdom of God. We are the Gadites. We're David's mighty men. Amen. And we're here to turn the kingdom of God over to Jesus right here in the earth as we occupy till he, re he turns. Amen. That means we got a lot of work to do. So it's fun and it's exciting. This is actually uh, the only weekend that I, we could get up here because I'm expecting now my youngest daughter's having a baby, which is our first grandson. So I have four granddaughters. Amen. And now we got one grandson, finally one of my son-in-laws, finally, finally figured it out. Amen. <laughs> finally figured it out. And so Pastor Ron, she's not letting me go anywhere until after that baby's born. And my daughter, she wants me to be in the room. I'm like, come on, baby. I've been in, room, I've been in the rooms now a long time with three daughters and four granddaughters. You know, surely one of the next generation can take over. But they want me there just praying in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? But then after that, we head off to Kenya for three weeks. Africa is a tremendous place. There's a great outpouring of the Spirit in the nation of Kenya. Amen. And so the light is really shining in Africa. There's a lot of things taking place there. And so you'll hear more and more about what's happening in Africa. And, and Africans are being sent out all over the world with a tremendous anointing upon their life. So it's a powerful thing to be part of that. Amen. And so when I go, I get, my, I get my garments, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm walking, man, when I walk on that platform, I look like a king. 
Amen. I got my, 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 my I'm going to have my garments on, man, and I'm going to get up there. I'm going to preach in Kenyan in Jesus' name. Somebody say glory to God. See, see, you, you still don't know that I've got, I've got a, I'm part of a different, I've, I've got a tribal mark here. Amen. I'm part of the tribe of, of, of Judah. Hallelujah. And Judah is everywhere. Amen. And so after that, we come back. See, that'd be, that's August. And then in September, we go to Charlotte, North Carolina to hang out with Apostle Terrell Murphy in their Occupy conference. So that'd be a great time there. So I encourage you to come to that. And then after that, we'll be going into October. And in October, we'll spend three weeks in China. And China is actually, the church is growing. Many things are happening there. I'm excited about China. As a matter of fact, I'm learning Chinese right now because I'm going to preach in Chinese. And I'm, I'm, I was thinking, you know, how is it that when it, after, after 60, why am I still learning languages? My goodness, you know. I was driving in the car the other day with Pastor Ron, and I've got my training tapes on, you know. And it's saying, you know, shit, you know all types of the Chinese language, which is totally different than Spanish and totally different than English. And uh, it's just really, you need God. Amen? You need God. But I, I, I'm thinking of the day that I'm going to be able to order uh, some, some great Chinese food for Apostle David in Chinese. Wouldn't that be awesome? So it's going to be interesting to see what he actually gets. Amen? <laughs> so I could tell him, give me a number two, something like that, right? Everybody has a number one, right? Every restaurant has a number one. So we can order you a number two, though. Okay, yeah. That's the way we get a little risky, Apostle David. Amen. And then after that, we come back into uh, Hallandale in November for our uh, Gathering the Remnant Conference in Hallandale Beach, Florida. That's where God lives, if you don't know. Amen. He lives right down the street from us, and he stays in our church all the time. Amen. So you can go to the website, www.jonasclark.com, and come and be a part of that. You need to, be, you need to hang around the fire, folks. Amen. You know, you can be close to the fire. You could be under fire, or you could be on fire. Amen? Somebody say, I want to be on fire. Yeah. Glory to God. And then, of course, we go into Christmas, and I don't know, maybe I'll go see Mickey, or Mickey Mouse or something like that in Christmas. And also, please keep Nicaragua in your prayers. We're in a very dangerous season in Nicaragua right now, and a lot of people are being killed. I mean, yesterday we had four people killed right there in the city of Lyon, 20 people injured, and it's just a mess, Okay. But we have to believe God. Now, you know, there's training, but then there's an engagement. Amen. And now in Nicaragua, we're in the engagement stage. It's very dangerous. People are getting killed. But we're believing for a new Nicaragua, okay? And uh, when you get gangsters in leadership, well, it's very important to be careful who you vote for. You know, just because they've got a shirt and a tie on doesn't mean that they're all that, okay? Remember what politicians do. Politicians promise you what's not theirs. Amen. Remember, the government has nothing that it doesn't take from somebody to give to somebody else. Amen? Amen. And if you get the wrong people in office, you get a mess. The spiritual climates get changed. You get gangsters in leadership. And when you get gangsters in leadership, there's a lot of, it's tough to get them out. It's like, it's like trying to get rid of roaches when you don't have truly no one's phone number. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Open your Bibles with me to... Um, the book of Ezekiel, um, early in the morning, the Spirit of God woke me up, and he started ministering me some things. So I don't know how all of this is going to come out today, but there's some stuff that he put strong in my spirit, and um, I'm going to go over those with you. We'll just believe God and see how, how God takes it. But now at the end of the service, let me, let me tell you what we're going to do at the end. Um, if you were here Friday night, you heard this. If you weren't, let me give you the instruction now. I believe that... When we as believers put our faith in God as being our, our Jehovah Jireh, our provider, we have to understand that our God hates slavery. He is so opposed to slavery. And the whole testimony of Moses was when the children of Israel were in bondage, they were in economic bondage. They were not able to worship God they were so bound up, they had lost their farms, they had indentured their children, and uh, it got so bad that the only thing they could do was cry out to God. Now, if those people could have delivered themselves, they would have delivered themselves. But what happened was this, they were children of the covenant, and bit by bit, they lost their freedom. It didn't happen overnight, but little by little, they lost their freedom. 
until they came to the place where Pharaoh so owned everything that the state owned everything that the people just became slaves. Amen? Amen. And even their children, they indentured them, they sold them into bondage, and they were in a mess. And they cried out to God, God heard them, and God came down to deliver them. What did he do? He hit the system. Bang! He hit Pharaoh's system, and he rocked it. Amen. And he delivered his children. He delivered the people of God out of Egypt. And when he delivered them out of Egypt, he said, I got a place for you, a place of plenty, a land of promise for you, and I'm going to take you out of that place, and I'm going to take you over to the place where I have for you. But he said this. He says, when you come out of Egypt, when you come out of bondage, you're not going to come out with empty pockets. You're coming out with silver, gold, raiment, amen, and you're coming out with prosperity and victory, amen. And this is the will of God for us today. And we live in a time, folks, when little by little we're losing some freedoms, and little by little we're finding ourselves in debt bondages, and little by little we're finding out that we don't own the wealth, that we don't have the homes anymore, we don't have the land anymore, and we are finding out that we are now indentured servants Amen. Instead of owning the businesses, we're sweeping the floors at the businesses. And let me tell you something. God's got a place for us. It's called prosperity. It is called victory. And it's called breakthrough. Amen. Amen. And God wants us to live in a different place spiritually than we're living right now. And so what does the Spirit of God do? He sends his anointed upon us to break the yoke, to remove the burden. Amen. So that we can live in the victory that God's called us to live in. So let me tell you this. God is here today to help us with this. So here's the instruction that we get Friday night. We need to believe God for financial freedom. Amen. Now, I'm not here to take up offerings. I'm not here to do that. What I'm here to do is get us prosperous. Amen. Amen? So that we can see what belongs to us. Because as soon as you can see what belongs to you, then you can go after it. Amen, somebody? Amen. But you know what? we got to fight for it. we got to believe for it. we got to trust God for it. And we've got to engage the enemy whenever we have to. But we've got to seize what belongs to us. Amen? So the instruction Friday night was, you know what? We need to believe God for debt cancellations. Debt cancellations. I know that's hard for some people to grasp that. But you know what? If God can heal the sick, why can't he take care of debts? Come on, let's think about it logically. If God can heal somebody that's died of cancer, and he does, and he does it all the time, then how is it not possible for God to dislodge that debt from you? How is it not possible that God could bring blessing from the other side of the world to help you? Amen. To have a supernatural encounter. You know, you know, an encounter from one person, favor from one person can change your life in 24 hours. In 24 hours. So what, why aren't we walking in these blessings? And I, I submit to you it's because we haven't heard about it. It's because we haven't been taught about it. It's because we haven't believed for it, amen. Somebody say, all things are possible to him that believeth. How many things? All things. So the instruction Friday night was to get a piece of paper, write down your debts, write down what your debt is. We've got to believe God for something. Amen. Let's be specific about it. Let's write it down and say, God, I need help in this area right here. This is a slavery for me. Now, look, some of us, we engage, some of us, we put the chains on ourselves. We made bad decisions, amen, because we didn't have the wisdom that we needed to make right decisions. So we made bad decisions. Others of us, who knows what happened? Maybe we got sick. Maybe, maybe events happened in the family. We don't know, and it doesn't matter. What matters is this. You're a child of God. Amen. What matters is this, that God wants you to come out of slavery into liberty so that you can do what God's called you to do. It's a big world out here, folks. You know, Carnesville is only one place. But this place right here that we're in, it's just a center. It's just a, it's just a starting place. But from here, you go all around the world, the north, the south, the east, and the west. But you need money, too. Amen? Amen. So we're going to write on a piece of paper what we're going to believe God for. And I'm going to call at the end of the service. We're going to bring this table up. We're going to put it here. And we're going to come down, and we're going to put those requests before God. Yeah? And we're going to believe God. Will, will you believe God with me today? That we believe God for God to cancel these debts, for God to help us and give us the miracles that we need. Amen. Now, I did this in China when I was there with Apostle David. And I don't know that Apostle David has ever seen me do that. But let me tell you something. There is so many testimonies of the Chinese people, how God canceled those debts. 
It's absolutely amazing. And people got lands, and people got houses, and people had debts canceled, and people had uh, one brother, um, um, Brother Gideon, Apostle David, you met him. Um, his wife is Esther at the church, Pastor Esther. Anyway, um, Pastor Cecilia calls me just last week. She says, she says um, when, when we prayed that day that Gideon and his wife put a request in, because they have a furniture company, okay? And anyway, they needed a debt canceled, and they were also praying for an increase in their business. So they told me that, at, what the, well, I think it was only just a few weeks later, that they had a breakthrough, and their debt was canceled. But then something happened on top of that debt being canceled. A man walked in and said, I want to give you some business. And they said, well, how much business is it? And the guy says, I want to give you $750,000 worth of business. $750,000 worth of business. Every month. Every month. 750,000, that's called increase. Look at somebody and tell them that's increase. Now, you might think that's coincidence. I don't. I don't think that's coincidence. I think that these type of things can take place all the time, but we've got to put ourselves out there. We've got to start believing God again. Come on, our God is a supernatural God. Come on, he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Even to the end of the age, he is a supernatural God. What can you believe him for? What can you believe God for? Where are you in your faith? What can you believe God for? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I talked to you last time I was here about the uncommon man. You remember that? And I talked to you about how I, how I, I recognized Apostle David as an uncommon man and what it dislodged into my life when I came back. Somebody bought me a Mercedes. Well, I would have never bought a, that Mercedes for myself but this brother called, he says, because he found out I drive a car with 100,000 miles. And it's a beautiful car. It's, a, it's an Enclave SUV, nice car, beautiful car. And he says, Apostle Genesis, he says, I can't have you driving a car with 100,000 miles in it. And I'm like, preach, brother. <laughs> and he says, um, I heard that you like a particular, you know, Mercedes S550 Benz. I said, yeah, I like that car. And he says, well, let's go, let's go, go over to the Benz dealers. And I didn't know he was going to buy me a car. I thought it maybe was going to do like a dream building session with me. Who knows? Who knows? But, I, but, you know, there's a chance, right? You know, if there's a chance, you're going to seize it. Isn't that right? So we went over there, and he's like, he says, well, which one do you like? You know, we're at the Benz dealership. And I said, I like that one, man. That's black. Somebody say, <clears throat> it's black. It had a tan interior. Yeah? Somebody say, black cars matter. And I said, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one, I, that's the one I like. And so he said, you know what? I'm going to buy it for you. And he bought me that car, and I'm like, I drove it home, put the sound system up. And I'm driving home, man, and I'm like, wow, this is God. But my point is this, that there are principles in the kingdom of God that you can operate in that God wants us blessed. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, does not your heavenly Father know how to give good gifts to you, somebody shout yes. yes. And so that's going to be the instruction, and we're going to have to come together in faith after the service here. After, at the end, we're going to pull the table up, and we're going to believe God for this. And had I known we were going to do that, I, would have brought, I started writing down all the different testimonies because I can't remember them all. Of all the different things that have happened since we've been praying these type of things, to, to write down all the different blessings, Amen. And that's what I want you to do, too. I said, because when we get done, and as the days follow, I want you guys to make sure you tell Apostle David what happened, okay? Because things are going to happen. These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Open your Bibles to Ezekiel 37. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost today. Lord, we believe that your word will come forth with strength and boldness today. Father, I thank you for the remnant that's here, those that are watching by television. I thank you, Lord God, for their lives and their calm. I thank you, Lord, that you desire good things for them. Lord, teach us. Lead us by your Holy Spirit today. Give us the revelation that we need, God, that we might do what we're called to do in this time. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. Early in the morning, the Spirit of God woke me up, and there were several things that God was just really 
work, you know, just, just locking me in on. And I'm just going to share these with you. I have no idea they're, how they're going to come out. Um, but I'm just going to be obedient to just step out there. And I could not get this out of my spirit today, and it was in Ezekiel chapter 37. And let's just take a look at it, because I believe it has something to do with us here today, okay? He says in verse 1, he says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Somebody say, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Say it. The hand of the Lord was upon me. That's the Holy Ghost. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And the Bible says here, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Can you imagine God picking you up, taking you to a valley with just a bunch of bones in it? Amen. It just kind of reminds me of that Jurassic Park movie, you know, they just go all the bones sitting there. But the spirit of God took this prophet, grabbed him, took him to a place in the spirit, and all it was was a whole bunch of bones, a stack of bones. And uh, verse 2, and he caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. So not only just a bunch of bones, but these are dry bones. Somebody say dry bones. <laughs> and he said it to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, prophesy unto the bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. Notice what he says. I want you to speak to them, and I want you to say over them, hear the word of the Lord. Speak to the bones. Somebody say, speak to the bones. And tell them, listen to the word of the Lord. Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of God. And thus saith the Lord, verse 5, thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded, not suggested, I prophesied as I was commanded, and I prophesied, and there was what? There was a noise. And behold, there was a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Now, here's what I want you to hear. There was noise, there was shaking, and there was shifting. There was noise, there was shaking, and there was shifting. There was noise, there was shaking, and there was shifting. Look at somebody and tell them, we're in this process right now. Noise, shaking, and shifting. It's called a process. It's the process of moving to another level. It's the process of crossing over to the other side. It's the process of entering the promised land. Amen. There was a noise, a shaking, and a shifting. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Now, we know this, bones deal with structure. Bones deal with structure. So when God says, speak to the bones, the bones begin to shake, noise is taking place, and all of a sudden there's a restructuring, somebody say restructuring, a restructuring that takes place. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Hmm. So now we see a structure with no breath. We see a form of godliness. But with no power, we see, we hear, we see the shaking, we hear the noise, but we see a man or a structure that has no breath in it, amen? And so there's no anointing there, there's no power there, but God ain't finished yet, amen? Verse 9, so then he said unto me, prophesy now to the wind, speak to the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they might what? That they might live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet. What happened? A great, exceeding army. Can you see the direction? Can you see it? A military force. 
a fervent military people, amen, that are so endued with God's power that they are called the army of the Lord, amen, and the army of the Lord is unstoppable. You can't stop them. They can't be defeated, amen, and everywhere they go, they take over. It's called dominion. So now, this is what the Lord was showing me last night, that we've been passing through this noise, we've been passing through this shaking And now the bones are coming together, bone to his bone, purpose to his purpose. I said purpose to his purpose, purpose to his purpose. But in order to get to that, there had to be a shaking. Everything that can be shaken has been and is being shaken. Amen. All over the world, we see this shaking taking place. But God calls the prophets together and he says, prophets I want you to speak. I want you to decree. Intercessors, I want you to speak. I want you to decree. What does he say I want you to do? I want you to speak to the bones. I want you to speak to those that formerly were a structure, were a house, but now they are dead, and God's saying, can these bones live? And the prophet was wise enough to say, you know, Lord. And God said, here's what I want you to do. I put my anointed upon you so that you can speak. And I want you to speak to the bones. And you command those bones to come together, bone to his bone. Stand up on your feet, amen. And I want you to speak to the bones life. So the prophet says, can these bones live? And God says, And this is what kept going in my spirit last night. And I will cause breath to enter, and you shall live. And God says, then I will cause breath to enter, and you shall live. And I will cause breath to enter, and you shall shall live. Now this church was birthed out of a gift that God put in a man named Apostle David Coker. And David Coker took his wife and his family to Rhema Bible College. You've heard the testimony because that was the move at the time. That's where the breath was at. That's where the wind was blowing. That's where the anointing was residing. And let me tell you something, there's something about pursuing God that makes you different than other people. Not everybody will pursue God the same way that you will. Not everybody's as interested. You know why churches aren't full? You know why they're not full? They're not full because people say in their minds, and I've heard this before, they'll say, I'm not ready for that yet. Because if they understood the gift of God and the power of God and the authority that God gives them, The churches would be, we wouldn't have buildings large enough for the churches, amen? So people don't come because they don't recognize what it is that God wants to do for them. And then the devil talks to them and says to them, yeah, well, you know where it's at. So if you ever need God, you know where he's at, amen? But here's the thing. We are remnant people. We're not like everybody else. We pursue the things of God. We pursue the anointed of God. We're pressing in. The kingdom of God suffers what? Violence. And the violent do what? They take it by force. That means you're pressing into it. Amen. That's because you want it so much. It's in you to go after the things of God. So that's what Apostle David did in that season. Amen. And so he went there. And what does God do? God trains us like he does all of us. Now, listen, he didn't get in Rainbow Bible College the training that he needed for 30 years of ministry. The only thing he got there was an awakening He got the Holy Ghost, the anointing came upon him to fertilize the gift of God that was in him. Amen. Yeah, that's what's happening to you that are coming here. Because remember, when you come here, we lay your hands on your head. Amen. And you get zapped by the power of God. Amen. And you need need to get zapped because there's things going on in your life and you need God to help you. Amen. Amen. Listen, we live in a world that's crazy. But just because they're crazy doesn't mean you have to be crazy. And we need God. We need to hang around the fire. We need to hang around the presence of the Spirit of God because it's the Holy Ghost that knows how to take us to the next place. So then Apostle David comes to the territory, and what does he do? He steps out of the truck, puts his feet on the ground, and all hell breaks loose, and he wished he hadn't went to Ramah. 
So what is that called? That means the enemy sees something in him that he doesn't see in himself. And that's what happens to you and I. And we wonder, why are we having so much trouble? One time I went in prayer and I said, God, why are, my, why are the sons in our ministry having so much warfare? Because, you know, I'm ministering to them. I'm doing everything I can to strengthen them, our young men, to give them the weapons that they need to teach them about how to fight back. And I was wondering, like, why, why all the trouble for my sons, my spiritual sons? And the Lord spoke to me. He said, the devil knows some things. And I said, well, what does he know, God, about my sons? And he said this. He said, the devil knows that if he can't take them out while they're sons, then he'll have to deal with them one day when they become fathers. And fathers have a whole different level of anointing on them. Amen. We love the sons, but let me tell you something. When they come into that fatherhood, when they come into the fullness of the maturity of their ministries, look out, devil. That's when they're really on the run then. Amen, somebody? Amen. So we need to stand. We need to come into this, into this place and recognize that. God wants to breathe life into us. The Spirit of God is saying, I'm going to put life in you. And your bones will live. Your vision will not die. It will increase. It will expand itself. Amen. It will move into new territories. It will do things that you've never seen it do before. But what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to start believing God again. Everything you get from God happens because you believe it. You believe it. Have you noticed some people believe and some people don't? You can sit in a sanctuary like this, and some people will grab hold. I mean, it's so easy for them to grab hold. And other people, it's like, my God, you've got to have an angel come and wrestle you down before you'll believe God. I'm at the place in my life that I believe God. And I love hanging around other people that believe God. And you know what? I don't want to be ordinary. I don't want to be boring. I want to do radical things for Jesus. Amen. I want to occupy. I want to turn the world upside down. I want to make the devil mad on purpose. Amen. I want to get him mad. I want to get him where he's frantically mad. Amen. I want him to just shudder whenever he hears my name. Amen. And I know you're like me. You want the same reputation that Paul had. Remember when, they, when, remember when those seven sons of Sceva tried to cast that devil out of that man? You remember that? And the devil says, uh, <clears throat> who are you? And these young boys, they said, well, um, we adjure you. We adjure you like a, we adjure you like in a drawer or something. I don't know. We adjure you in the, in the name of the man that Paul preaches about. You know, that guy, that preacher over there, that, that old coker over there. We adjure you to come out of that man. And the devil looks at him and says, say what? <laughs> say what? Jesus we know, and Paul we heard about, but we don't know you. And the Bible says that devil just stripped them all down and run them down the road. Don't tell me you can't get a reputation in the realm of the spirit. What reputation do you have? Does the devil know your name? Is he afraid of you, or does he like being in your company? Is the devil afraid of you? Does he skip your house when he works the neighborhood? When God called the prophet, he took him to a place where there was nothing but a pile of bones. And the will of God was to change those bones, that pile of bones, and make an army out of it. And I believe that's what God wants to do today. And all of us are part of this shaking. All of us are hearing the noise. And we are seeing a restructuring in the church of Jesus Christ. And we're seeing a purging. Amen. We're seeing a pruning taking place everywhere. Not just here in Carnesville, but all over the world. There are people disconnecting. There are people selling out. There are people trying to tell us we need to be more inclusive. Amen. And we need to be more gentle with the gospel. And we need to be more understanding of people's sexual propensities that are different than God's. Mm -hmm. And we're being challenged for numbers and for money. I'm here to tell you right now, God never changes his mind about certain things. Amen. Amen. God said marriage is between a man and a woman. Yeah. I said it. I'm sorry. That's as tolerant as I'm getting. <laughs> Amen. 
But God is shaking things all over the world. But God calls the prophet. Now, remember, we're not just talking about prophets here. We're talking about intercessors, and we're talking about spirit-filled people. And God says, speak to them and tell them, I want you to begin this decree. I want you to speak into the bones, speak into the structure. Can these bones live? The answer is yes. So what does God say? Prophesy to them. Speak to them. Command the wind from the north, the south, the east, and the west to speak into the bones. Amen. So this is what we're doing right here in Cardsville, Georgia. We're speaking into the purpose of God in the territory, in the church, and gateway believers, gateway Christian fellowship. Amen. We're speaking, thus saith the Lord. Can these bones live? Somebody shout yes. Yes. So here we are in the midst of this. You know, I think we need to make more, more noise. I think that the only, place, the only place that should be quiet is in the graveyard. But churches ought to be exciting, amen? That's why I feel sometimes just to scream. Ah! <laughs> just to wake people up, Amen. Jesus! Somebody praise him! Hallelujah! Just make the devil nervous, amen? Somebody shout! Help me, baby, help me, baby. See, only the baby's crying. God said, speak to the wind. Well, the wind's the Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Ghost will obey God too. Every church got to where it's at because of the Holy Spirit. We can't go forward without the Spirit of God. Now, I was thinking about this the other day. Do you know that Jesus knew he left us in a mess? You know that Jesus stepped up on that elevator and left? Right after the resurrection, he had a meeting for 40 days and 40 nights with his disciples. These are the people that he's going to use to turn the world upside down. They're the revolutionaries. So I want you to see this. He had a, he had a revolutionary meeting. And for 40 days, all he talks about is the kingdom of God. That means that Jesus was very kingdom-minded. Think about this. Are you kingdom-minded? Are you kingdom-minded? He was very kingdom-minded, not rapture-minded, kingdom-minded. Invade, occupy, influence, and take over. Kingdom-minded, 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 kingdom-minded. Occupy till I come. I gave you talents, do something with them. And after the 40 days, he basically leaves. He left this world in a mess with a revolution taking place. But before he goes, he tells his young revolutionaries, he said, listen, go wait in Jerusalem. Don't launch the revolution yet. Wait in Jerusalem until you get and do with power from on high. He said, and you shall receive one. Power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you'll be my witnesses. Somebody say, thank you, God, for Holy Ghost power. power. Now listen, he knew what kind of world we'd be happy to live in when he left. So think about it for a minute. Here's God leaving us in the condition of the world that we see today. So what would be the most important thing Jesus could possibly do to help us knowing that he's leaving? And the answer is to give us the Holy Ghost. The power of God on earth, amen, to change everything. And the Holy Ghost responds to the word, and it responds to your faith in the word. The Holy Spirit's always watching our reaction to his presence. So here we are today, and you know what? I get a chance to preach in a lot of different churches and in a lot of different nations. And you know what I see today? I see a lot of churches that don't have the Holy Spirit in them anymore. They don't even preach Holy Ghost anymore. They don't even use the word ghost anymore. They're like the Spirit. He might hear you, spirit. 
the Holy Spirit. They're afraid to say, Holy Ghost! Spirit de Santo! And they're afraid to even say his name. But you know what I'm convinced of today? That we stand on the cusp of the greatest move of God we've ever seen. Things are changing, folks. Things are changing. There's a noise taking place. There's a shaking taking place. And there's a shifting taking place. It's called a process of moving us. God says, I'm going to speak into those bones and you shall live. You might as well say amen. amen. And then the other thing that was really in my spirit this morning, I just couldn't get it out, is Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's just go there. Let me just, let's read it. You probably know it by heart. Apostle David's probably taught you it over and over and over again. You already know. Look at this, Hebrews chapter 11. Good turn there with me. Verse 1, are you there? Come on, turn faster. If you go home and study your Bible, you can get there in a hurry. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. What does it say, verse 1? Now, now faith, faith is. is. Now, now, faith is. is. Are you in the church? Somebody say amen. amen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things unseen. That means things you can't see, but it's the evidence. Your faith is the evidence of things you can't see right now. Now, faith is. When God speaks to us, how's our response? Our response is now. When is now? Right now. You know, when I was learning Spanish, I found out that now has many different words. Now could be ahora mismo. Now could mean ya. That means now, dad, come it. Right now. Not later now. Right now. And sometimes you got to raise your voice when you hang around with island people. Hey, right now, dad, gum it. Man, I'm doing good. I got every baby in the house crying. You know you're preaching good. You know you got an anointing when the babies are shouting. Somebody say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen, for by it, we obtain, we obtain, we obtain a good report. What is a good report? That we got what we were believing for. Now, when God says there's a noise, and God says there's a shaking, and God says bone to his bone, we need to say, now we believe that God's speaking into us, and those Bones are coming alive, amen. Our purpose, the way God designed us, is coming into being in Jesus' name. All things are possible to him that believeth. Can you shout amen, somebody? We got to get back to this place again where we start believing God. The reason you're living in poverty, honey, is because you don't believe God for prosperity. Go ahead and say amen. It's all right. Get mad at me if you want to, but it's still true. If you're living underneath your blessings, it's because you're not decreeing it over your life. It's time for us to fight back. It's time for us to believe what God said. Now faith is Apostle David. That means it's time to do what God called you to do. Do everything that's in your heart. Come on, somebody say amen in here. We got to get to this place where we stir up the gift of God in us again. You know, the Apostle Paul seen Timothy, seen Timothy getting a little light. I'm sure the Apostle Paul was watching his spiritual sons, and one day he saw Timothy and said, Timothy, you're not, you're not responding like you used to, son. What's happening in your life? And you know what he told him? He said, Timothy, hey! Timothy, hey! Timothy! Stir up!
up the gift that's in you. Look at somebody and tell them, stir up the gift in you. What's wrong with you? Stir up the gift in you, son. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Do you believe it? Shout yes. yes. Then he goes on here and he says, he said, by faith you understand that the worlds were framed. By the word of God. Well, if the world can be framed by the word of God, what about your world? If you don't like your life, change it. If you don't like what's happening in your life right now, change it. If you don't like your world right now, use the God and change it. Somebody wants hope and change, I'm here to give you some. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that those things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now drop down to verse 6. I like this. Are you still with me or are you going home? He says in verse 6, but what? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Boy, it got quiet. You hear how quiet it got? You can hear a pin drop. Without faith, it's impossible. Without faith, it's impossible. But oh, what happens when you got faith? What happens when you got faith? Then all things are possible. What do you want possible in your life? What is it that you're believing for? What is it that you want? Mama, come on. Start decreeing it. Start prophesying it. Start speaking to the wind. Speak to the north, the south, the east, and the west. Give it up. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God. How many people here came to God? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Now, those of you that are here today, this is 4th of July weekend. This is the worst time ever to have a church service. Do you know that 4th of July week is the lowest attendance in church in the whole 365 days a year? Did you know that? You didn't know that. We're in the right place. You're learning something today. And here we are with 99 people. And I was thinking, send the porters out to the street. We'll find another one and drag them in. Tell them we're having a lottery. <laughs> Tell them they're underneath the chair. There's envelopes with money. Of course, they'd come in and find out we already got it. <laughs> Those that come to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that pursue him. How many people here pursue God? You know, we got to start stirring up our faith. We got to start believing God again. What are you believing God for? Well, I'm just waiting for Apostle David to tell me something. Well, Geraldine's waiting for him too. You can hear from God. Stir up yourself, amen. amen? Speak to the wind and command the Holy Ghost, amen, to breathe upon the word of God in your life. Listen to me, men. There's nothing you can't do. You are the protector. You're the provider. You are the deliverer in your family. You need God's Holy Ghost help, amen? And if you don't like what's going on in your life, change it! How are we going to do that, Apostle Jonas? You're going to find the scripture, you're going to find the word that says, this is what I need in my life. Amen. Amen. My God shall provide all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. When was the last time you decreed that over your bank account? When you go to the bank, you pull up there and say, my God is providing. And you believe it, that you receive it, and then you'll have it. In John chapter 15, a tremendous verse. I love it. John chapter 15. 
The apostle says, if you abide in me, if you abide in me, and my words, my words, my words abide in you, then you will ask whatsoever you will, and it will be done for you. Herein is my Father pleased, glorified, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Look at someone and tell them, God's wanting you to bear some fruit. So here we are, we're in the midst of the noise, we're in the midst of the shaking, we're in the midst of the restructuring, and God's saying, prophet, start speaking into the bones. Those bones, bone to his bone, every joint supplies. Every joint supplies. Everybody matters. Everybody's important. Everybody's got a part to play in this. Everybody makes up the hedge. Everybody stands in the gap. Amen? Amen. This church is about to have a mighty explosion of Holy Ghost signs and wonders and miracles. We're getting back to that place we once were where we believe God again. Go ahead and shout amen. Amen. I'm seeing more. You know, when I came back from China the last time, and I came up behind the pulpit. I started feeling an anointing that I hadn't. It was almost like 10 times what it used to be, Apostle David. I mean, I was just shuddering inside. And I'm like, what is this, God? And God said, that's an explosion. Like fire shut up in my bones. And I started feeling it. People come to the altar, and I started feeling that, that thing coming upon me. I'm like, I'm looking for somebody that had just believed. Just somebody that had just believed. Just, just find me one person that had come to the altar and just believed God. Just one person I can lay hands on. Just one person that we can release this anointing to. Just one person that will believe God. I think I found a bunch of people here today. We are believing God in this church for signs and wonders and miracles. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. Is there any believers in here? Come on, lift up your hands and tell me I'm a believer. Come on, say it. I am a believer. Let God's power 